Hey guys, how's it going? So probably about every once a month, I like to plug my Jeep Wrangler in, charge it, kind of give it a once-over. I usually check the oil really, really often, but um, I always like to do like just kind of a little maintenance kind of tune-up thing. Oh, probably once a month. So this month, I found that I had a leak uh, in the thermostat housing. Um, well, wasn't that big of a deal? I mean, it's just a thermostat that's leaking. Um, I like to be able to set the hood back all the way since it is a Jeep Wrangler. But you might not actually be able to see it, but there's just a tiny leak under here. Um, but I'm losing coolant, so if I open up the radiator, there's no coolant. So, well, there is coolant. It's just, it's lower than this hose, and this hose doesn't really even have any coolant in it. Um, it's a slow leak. Again, it's it's not too terribly big of a deal, um, but it's something that does need to be addressed um, in the next couple months. Plus, it's getting cold, so as my coolant drains a little bit more, I lose the um, I lose heat. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this and show you guys how to. In case you guys didn't know, really the biggest thing that you're going to need is that gasket that's leaking. So this is it. Some people like to use RTV. I really don't like that. Um, because if you apply it wrong or you don't apply it correctly, you, you kind of mess up your work. Coolant, um, and then this is a thermostat. You might as well replace it. Uh, you're already in there. Better than having to pull it off in a couple months because your thermostat uh, isn't working. So, besides that, just a general array of sockets and pliers to get hoses off and pretty much just the standard stuff. All right, first things first is to just remove this connector. There's a little clip on the bottom and it pulls right off. It's a nice weather pack one. And then we gotta kinda gotta fundle with these uh, post clamps. They're pretty easy to get off. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the pair of pliers that work great for them, but that's gonna do the job. So, it's hard to do this with just one hand, <laughs> but uh, the idea is you just get these hoses off and don't forget to put a drain pan underneath your vehicle. I have one, I'm not gonna show you, but there is one under there. Coolant's bad for animals and you don't want them to drink it. But uh, get those hoses off to the thermostat. So I pulled those hoses off and I actually didn't lose any fluid whatsoever. I, I thought I might have, um, or I would. But you can see there is a little bit of corrosion in there. I mean, it is an older thing. Um, as I take this off, I can spray it with brake cleaner. I won't, uh, I don't really like using brake cleaner on anything that goes inside your engine. It's very corrosive and it'll destroy a lot of stuff. But that's not a lot of corrosion. I mean, it's just pretty much gunk. So next time this is flushed through, that'll be removed. Um, and even just having some fresh coolant, we'll go through that, we'll remove it. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna now take out these bolts. I already know the sizes, I did uh, this job on an 88 Wrangler a couple days ago. So it's a half inch. And I have a bolt right here, right there. And then I have a bolt that's right, it's kind of down there, you'll see it, you can feel it. I'll need to use a little extension on it, but so just loosen those bolts. So I already pulled one bolt out, and you can see that there was uh, actually some of that silicone uh, that I don't like using on thermostats attached to it. So. I used way too much, and you can see it, I mean, this bead of silicone back there. So, pull this last one, oh, this is already gonna come off, and look at that, look how gooey that is down there, I mean, you should not have that coming off your, uh, your engine like that. I, I actually thought I'd have to use a pry bar to get it out, so I brought one, um, but let's pull this thermostat out here too. I mean, this thermostat still might be good, oh, look at that. I mean, Look how much silicon is on that. I mean, that is, that's not right. You should never use that much on there. Little, little tiny bead if you do decide to use silicone, but this is, um, this is black silicone too. Yeah, it's just all junk. That's, uh, that's black silicon, which is more like, uh, it's oil resistant. <laughs> There's a, there is like a blue silicone or like a, a white grayish silicone that you can use. Again, if, if you do decide to use it, but use the right stuff, I mean, oh, this looks like it had kind of a, I don't know if that's a gasket too, or 
But uh, if you're going to use silicone, just use silicone. And if you're going to use a gasket, just use gasket. Looks like that's half one of the other, but even so, that's not even really the right silicone to use for it. So, use the right stuff if you're going to do this job. Looks like someone botched it up. Alright, here's my gasket scraper, and next time you see this, it'll be all cleaned up. Make sure you do the on the block too. You need to have a good surface. Uh, also, don't dig into it. Kind of like slide up and, and be real careful that you don't mar and damage the surface. Now, this is uh, cast iron, so it's going to be a lot harder to destroy this. But if you have an aluminum block or aluminum thermostat housing, it's going to be a lot, lot easier to put uh, little grooves in there. And you don't want to. All right, so I have a rag with a little bit of brake cleaner. I know some guys just spray it directly on it, and I don't like to do that. I don't mind using a little bit of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe it on this, and it's going to help clean that surface. Make sure there's no grease or grime or anything that'll stop this gasket from sealing. I scraped it all off. I didn't really see anything. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at all that stuff that was on there that would stop it from sealing. So just get a rag. Spray a little bit of brake cleaner on it and uh, wipe off your surfaces. Make sure they're clean, you'll feel it. Make sure they're flat and uh, that's what I would do. So do that for this and then for the thermostat housing as well. Might be kind of hard to see but those threads are just full of silicone. So please guys, make sure you don't do that. If your threads are full of silicone, spray down with brake cleaner. It'll get it out and then wipe it with a paper towel. It'll just clean it up real quick. But yeah, guys, don't use so much silicone that it gets onto the threads. I mean, look at that. What's the point of that? That just makes it so it locks it in your block and you don't want that. One more thing you might want to see is look how that edge is marred up. That's not going to affect it since an outlet isn't very close to it at all. A gasket will cover that and it won't, uh, it won't be a problem. I mean, when I pulled this off, I pulled it from the top this part that I'm holding on to now. So that was done before me. It's kind of a shame because to replace parts like these it, it can get very expensive and if that was any more in there I would probably have to replace it. But you can see how I mean that edge is just marred up. So don't don't use any hard tools or anything sharp that's going to dig into this. I mean this is a cast steel or cast iron part. It, you shouldn't be able to dig into that that well. If you have to um, use like a pry bar and pry you know, when this is sitting on here, pry between the block and this to push this off, but don't don't actually ever pry where that gasket meets. You're just asking for trouble and to ruin a housing or, or a part like that. I, I see people do it on heads all the time, and you're going to destroy that head. Uh, so. so all our surfaces are clean, and what we're going to do is we're going to take our thermostat and actually put it in. Now, some of these have a, like a hole in that. That hole is going to point up. It helps bleed it. Some old-time mechanics like to drill a little tiny hole because um, my system hasn't been bled all the way I mean it'll help bleed the system but all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back in here um, it, it'll kinda just sit in there I might need to put in the housing first for it to line up yeah I'll probably have to do that put it in the housing and when I stick it in it'll line up all the way um, but yeah so just be kinda careful with that and make sure that you put it in the right oh there we go there it's sticking in that's the right way for it to go in uh, feel free to absolutely check your manual I mean you should have a Haynes manual or a, a Chilton manual or um, the factory repair manual um, but the next thing to do is put the gasket on the housing and, and tighten it in. all right so this is probably the best angle I can get of it uh, you kind of need two hands to do this so I can't really hold the camera but I have my gasket it's on that thermostat the bolts are kind of through and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up with the holes I'm a firm believer of using paper to paper gaskets, um, I'm sorry, paper gaskets on this. Um, kind of just got to be real careful, line it up with the holes. There's one. There you go. I'm going to turn it in by hand a little bit until I can get this other one on bottom. I like to put the gasket on uh, first with the bolts in and that will make it so I don't accidentally mess up or pierce that gasket um, or the gasket gets out of whack. So it's kind of hard to show but basically you put the gasket on. Unfortunately for me it got really dark really quickly. I started this at not the right time. 
I had a little bit of problem fishing the bolts through uh, and lining up the thermostat, but I did get it. You can see that nice new blue gasket in between there. And now I just have to rehook everything and then I'll have to bleed the system. But that's basically how you replace the thermostat. It's really easy. It doesn't take very long at all. 